I finally finished my evaluation on the uh, Hoka Clifton 5s, the Hoka Bondi 6s, and the Skechers Max Road Ultra 3. And I actually ran with one shoe on one foot and one shoe on the other, and I kind of mix and matched. and got the uh, Ride 7 here, and I just wanted to give my uh, evaluation on how I felt. Uh, and pretty much, I came to the conclusion that you can't have everything. And what I mean by that is, you, it's what you would think, it's the obvious thing. The lighter the shoe, the less stack, the less foam, the less protection underfoot you're going to get. Uh, the more weight, the higher stack, the more protection. So in all these shoes, you could not get everything all in one package. But let me just give you a little uh, synopsis on where I've come in my um, shoe journey. And I started uh, uh, running long distance in uh, March of 1979. So it's exactly 40 years now. And prior to that, you're what? 18, 19 years old in high school, running winter track in something called Puma Flats. And all these things were was just a, a leather upper and a very thin rubber gum sole. And that was it. There was absolutely no protection whatsoever. I was running indoor track in, uh, on a concrete floor, but it didn't matter because you have 18 year old feet. Big deal. So I started running long distance when I was 23 in 1979, and I started with, uh, what was it, Saugany, the one of the Saugany's, I forgot the Challenger or the, oh, I can't remember, it's been so long, but one of those, they actually have brought them back. Uh, so, and that was fine, you know, they were pretty heavy, but it was good enough. So about the mid-2000s, I started having problems with my feet as I got older, and I ran mostly in the Nike uh, Pegasus 27, 28, 29, up to 30, and this is a, a 30. Um, and so I ran for a few years with them. It turned out they, they were fine back then, but as I got older, I started getting uh, plantar fasciitis uh, more readily, so I needed more protection. So I actually cornered the market on these uh, 30s. I, I, I bought about, oh, I must have about, ooh, I think 9 to 11 pairs now. Um, I used them for work when I worked uh, as a physical therapist. I was a physical therapist for about, well, exactly 38 years until I retired three years ago. And uh, so I used these for many years as my work shoe because I'm standing on my feet uh, doing my thing all the time. So these were very protective then. But then I had to go to something a little bit more protective and I discovered the Hoka's. So uh, my comparison here will be, let's see, the, uh, oh, where's my, hold it, don't move. Oh, there it is. Ho! How's that? You could tell um, <laughs> I don't do this professionally or for money. I just uh, want to put out just a, um, a regular person's evaluation on different things, especially somebody who's over 60. You know, there are a lot of young people on YouTube doing recommendations and evaluations and, you know, they're, they're in a different stage of life. So... I figured I'd throw my two cents in and maybe that could help somebody else that's having the problems that I had. This is what I was looking for, the Hoka Clifton 5. So I got the whole gamut here. So uh, let's go with the Ride 7, Skechers Ride 7, which tends to be probably the lightest or as light as the Max Road Ultra 3, which has much more protection underfoot but this thing is much more flexible. So if you're younger and you want a, 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 a lot of uh, underfoot protection for a light, flexible shoe, this is pretty good. It probably, the bottom's not gonna last very long, as you can see from the Ultra 
twos that I put in, what's this, eight months? I used to go, and I still do, a whole year on one pair of shoes. And you can do the math. These days, I cut my running down to five miles, three times a week, times 52 weeks. And this is eight months. And I can go through the hokas, and it won't look nearly as bad as this for 12 months. Well, these are pretty new. Well, actually, they're very new. So, um, okay, so I started with the Nikes. They weren't good enough. And I went to needing shoes that had a lot of foam and protection underfoot. They're all neutral shoes. I didn't need anything for um, any excessive pronation or supination or anything like that. So, um, so let's, uh, let's go with a comparison. And actually, you can't have everything. When you go to the lightest one that's more flexible and has more response, you just don't have as much underfoot protection. You can feel the, the ground much uh, more readily in these shoes. Then you go up with the Skechers, and what do you have? You have more protection, a more lively bounce to them, but not, not as much as going up to the Hoka Clifton 5s. So you're going from probably 7.8, 7.9, and this is a 7.8, even though it gives you more protection than the, um, the Ride 7s. Not as much flexibility, though. So that's why I said you can't have everything. You know, you want super flexibility for that uh, heel toe off. Uh, here it is. But not as much protection. Then you get more protection underfoot. Uh, a, a more, a slightly more lively bounce in the foam compared to the Hoka 6s or the um, Clifton 6s. Six, and this one feels much more substantial. There's much more structure in the upper than these things. I, I kind of, I, I ran with, with um, one on one foot, one on the other foot, and the foot that had the Skechers was, um, I viewed it as it's much more free, that, I had, that my foot was able to move better, my ankle had more natural motion, I wasn't held together as solidly as this one, but do you really need that structure? You, you'll have to evaluate that yourself. Uh, but they're all great shoes. Uh, more protection here, and then getting to the, the max protective largest stack uh, Hoka Bondi 6. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I ran in these things for eight months, and I have gone back to the Bondi's. Um, they're heavier. This must be low tens in my eight and a half men's shoe. This is definitely 7.8. But um, I just, uh, m my plantar fasciitis just do does not take hold when I wear these for the long term. And what Hoka has done compared to the Bondi 5s is it's a, I think it's a much more lively bottom. I feel a lot more spring where the previous model had a thud. So it was, it was plenty of foam, but when you'd hit, it'd go thud and that's it. Here, I can feel when I do um, um, heel, heel strike, foot flat, then toe off, I, I feel more bounce in the foam, like there's more give, like it's loading up and then it's releasing. And I don't know if that's just a feeling I get, it's in my head, whatever, but I'd run with these for quite a while, or, or you know, Bondi 3, Bondi 4, Bondi 5, etc. And I think this definitely has more spring than the previous model. So that's about it. Um, I guess what you can take from this is that you can't have everything. Obviously, you're 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 adding some things in the lighter shoes, in the more flexible shoes that you are not getting in the more substantial shoes. So you just have to try them on, see what you need, and figure which might 
be the best for you in the long run. So that's all I really um, have to share. Okay, have a good one. Take care.